Thanks very much for joining me, everybody, on a painful day, I think, for anybody who follows and supports um, Pakistan cricket. 228 run loss to India. Um, it can only be described as not only painful, but uh, embarrassing as well. Pakistan were outclassed, outfought, outthought, outmaneuvered, and completely outplayed by an opponent that just wanted it more. They were tactically more ready. The players seemed to be more up for it. And uh, Pakistan just didn't know where to start, really. So, looking at the performance there, I think you've got to look at the previous match firstly. Yeah, Pakistan bowled India all out last game, but Pakistan didn't win that game. Just thought some of the comments after the, the previous game from Babar Azam and Shaheen Shafidi were a little bit over the top insofar as Pakistan hadn't won that game, they hadn't won the tournament. Just felt the, the comments were a little bit... Um, uh, let's just say a little bit too much, a bit over the top regarding that bowling performance, which from the three pace bowlers of Pakistan was absolutely fantastic. But um, as I say, at the end of the day, Pakistan didn't win that game. And I just thought those comments probably wound the Indian team up and encouraged them to, to perform as well as they have done over the last couple of days. So the game started with the toss, obviously. And it was a strange decision by Barbara Azam. I know, Hindsight is a wonderful thing, but to win that toss and to put the opposition in, I think he was hoping and gambling on. I'd better be careful using that word gambling at the moment with um, all the casino stuff going on in um, in Sri Lanka at the moment, but never mind. We'll continue to use that word gambling. Babur gambled on Shaheen Shah Afridi taking early wickets against the Indian opposition like he did last time and Nassim Shah backing him up. But what actually happened was the Indian openers, Roy Sharma and Shubman Gill, they counter-attacked. And Pakistan didn't really have a plan B. They absolutely hammered Shaheen Shah Afridi to all parts of the ground. And, you know, after two or three overs of uh, Shaheen's bowling, it was a different game. You know, gone was the uh, the early wickets from the previous match. This time around, Pakistan were in a different game. It was a different battle. And uh, the Indians showed right at the start that... Um, it was going to be a totally different kettle of fish. So there you have it. I mean, the toss <clears throat> and then Shaheen Shafidi struggling at the start, that set the tone. Um, got to give some credit to uh, Nassim Shah. I think he bowled really well throughout before picking up his injury, especially at the start of the innings. Uh, while Shaheen was being smashed to all parts, Nassim was bowling really well. Um, regarding the, the third pacer, Harris Ralph, yeah, he did a steady job after Shaheen struggled. Um, and it's sad to see him injured. I just hope that he's um, fit and recovers from his injury very shortly because he is um, he's a much-needed um, weapon in that Pakistani bowling armory. My only concern is that um, obviously the World Cup isn't too far away and um, let's just hope that uh, Harris's injury isn't a very serious one. Just got to wonder about some of the uh, squad rotation and how careful Pakistan are going to be um, in the in the lead-up to the World Cup and, you know, it might be a case of having to utilise some of the backup bowlers and giving the likes of Harris Ralph uh, some rest. Pakistani spinners, um, yeah, they've been struggling. I mean, compare the Indian spinners, especially uh, Yadav today who took five wickets um, with our spinners. And there just seems to be no confidence with the likes of Shadab Khan and Mohamed Nawaz is a st steady spinner, but He's not the sort of guy who looks like he's going to take you, get you four or five wickets and win a game. Even Shadab, you know, every over he's bowling either a half tracker or a full toss. Where is that confidence? What's happened to these guys? What's happened to these spinners, particularly ahead of the World Cup? And Indian pitches, you know, they're um, they're unforgiving for for bowlers. So these spinners really need to get on the game. Do we need a change of plan regarding the spinners? I think that's one for uh, Mickey and the uh, the other guys to look at. Maybe a fresh uh, person is needed in the spin bowling armory. But let's see who they settle for in the in the final squad because I think the spinners are, are certainly lacking a bit of confidence. Thought uh, Virat Kohli and KL Rao were absolutely superb against the the Pakistani bowlers today. Smashed them to all parts. Um, they had a plan. They had a target in mind. I think they got a few extra 
above the target that they probably had in mind. But again, I'm afraid Babur Azam and some of the uh, the captaincy, the field placings, um, we were lacking um, in, in spirit out in the field as well in terms of uh, a plan B or a plan C. Again, these are areas that I think need to be to be looked at. Um, moving on to the Pakistani battling. Now, I think the openers, yeah, we all want to see Fakir Zaman and Imam Malak doing really well. But just looking at some of the numbers, Fakir Zaman in his last nine ODI innings has scored 186 runs. Um, it, that's a, at an average of 20. He's had a few starts, a few 20s, a few 30s, but he just looks a shadow of the player that he was not so long ago. I know he's a confidence batter and you know it might just be one big innings that gets Fucker back on track, but at this moment in time, I'm just wondering whether he deserves a place in that starting eleven or not, because time is running out. Is it a case of putting Mohamed Rizwan into open, perhaps, and getting another middle order batter um, for the World Cup? These are tough decisions that uh, Mickey and the guys need to, to look at because um, Fucker is struggling badly not only in terms of runs, but um, his timing, his footwork, it all just does not look right. Uh, Imam al Haq as well, another who uh, has got 28 runs in four innings against India. Didn't look confident at all out there again today. Um, yeah, he's got a big average, but um, really need him to score some big runs in some of these big matches um, because it's all well and good scoring lots of runs against the the uh, let's just say, with all due respect, the lesser teams, you know, getting those 80s, 90s and 100s. But um, what really matters and what stands the uh, the men from the boys are the ones where are the players who make those 100s and the big scores against the tough opposition when the team really needs it. Um, Barbara Azim, there's so much pressure on him, expectations. People want him to score 100 almost every game. You know, that pressure intensifies when you're playing against India. And uh, I just hope Babur can cope with that pressure going into the World Cup because, um, yeah, he's the main batter, he's the captain, he's who all the Pakistani fans uh, look to score runs. And I think he needs more support from some of the guys who I've mentioned, like Imam and Fakhar Zaman and Iftikhar Ahmed and all these, uh, Aga Salman and these guys. You know, you can't just keep on relying on Babur to score runs every single game. Um, so yeah, these the opening um, positions in in the ODI cricket at the moment for Pakistan are, are a big problem because going into the World Cup, can you afford to make changes? Can you afford to put a new opener in to uh, to open the innings? I don't know. The, these are these are tough calls. Is it a case of making that last minute decision? Um, I think it might be an idea just to throw Rizwan up at the top of the order, send him into open, and uh, see how he does. You know, it might be that uh, that uh, wild card, you know, a change of plan that uh, that works for Pakistan. Um, the uh, the Pakistani batting, yeah, the conditions were different today, and um, you know there was a little bit more assistance for the Indian bowlers, but um, they looked absolutely clueless against spin. Some wild shots, some great bowling by Jasprit Bumrah at the top of the innings, uh, but the Pakistani batters just looked. Absolutely clueless against Yadav, who took five for 25. And he'll be thinking, yep, yeah, that was nice and easy. Eight overs only, and um, I'll take that lovely five for. Thanks very much, Pakistani batters. Um, yeah, so 228 run loss. A uh, couple of uh, stats regarding that. It's the biggest win for India versus Pakistan ever in uh, ODIs. And it's the second worst loss for Pakistan in ODIs when batting second. Painful. Ouch. Embarrassing. Yeah. Um, so as I say, Pakistan were completely outplayed. There's there's areas of their game really that they need to improve on. As I mentioned before, the batting is a huge concern and the spin bowling. You know, you can't go into a World Cup with only one or two of your batters in form and the rest performing once in 10 innings. That just does not work. You need more than Barbara Azam. You need more than Mohamed Rizwan to, um, to make those runs. Yeah, if the car performed the other day, but um, you know how often does he do that? Fakhar Zaman, I've mentioned, Imam performs once in a while, but these guys need to start scoring runs and supporting Barbara Azam on a consistent basis. The Pacers, I've got no problems with. You know, Shaheen had a, had a bad match against India, but he'll come back 
Nassim Shah, we know his quality. Harris Ralph, we know that he'll get wickets. But those spinners really need to up their game. And uh, particularly Shadab Khan, who's been around for so long now. And, um, you know, it, it's about time he started adding consistency to his performances with both bat and ball. Thank you very much for watching. Don't feel too down. Uh, I'm sure Pakistan will bounce back. We know what they're like. They're up one minute, down the next. So uh, Sri Lanka next. Hopefully they'll win that. And um, who knows? India versus Pakistan final. Let's see. Thanks for watching.